Let's jump into Spring Tool Suit ID and let's quickly create Spring Boot project. So there are many ways to create a Spring Boot project. You can either use Spring Initializer to quickly create and bootstrap Spring Boot project. And if you are using Eclipse STS ID, that is Spring Tool Suit ID, then Spring Initializer is already integrated in Spring Tool Suit ID. So you can use you know spring initializer in spring tool suit id to create a spring boot project all right so go to file here and then new and then choose spring starter project and look at here this is a spring initializer website right so if you can see here this is the url okay this is the url of spring initializer and the spring initializer is integrated in spring tool suit id so instead of uh, you know going to the browser and uh, accessing this Spring Initializer website to create a Spring Boot project and generate a Spring Boot project and manually import in Eclipse ID. So what we can do is we can directly create Spring Boot project using Spring Initializer in Spring Tool Suit ID itself. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's do a project name here, something like Spring Boot Backend. Okay, you can give any name, uh, project name that you want, but I will give Spring Boot Backend. And then here you can see two types of project, Marvin or Gradle. I'm going to choose Marvin, but uh, if you have a requirement for Gradle, then you can go ahead and you can choose Gradle over here. And then we are going to choose packaging as a jar here. Okay, because we are going to run our Spring Boot application as a standalone uh, with embedded Tomcat server. That's the reason I'm going to pick up packaging as a jar here and then java version i'm going to choose java 16 which is the latest release of java as of now and you can see here these are the three jvm languages and we are going to use java so select java and group id i'm going to give net.java guides but you can give any uh, you know group id that you want and artifact id is nothing but our project name and keep version as it is and then description I will just give Spring Boot RESTful Web Services and package um, I'm going to give net.java guides dot Spring Boot something like that. So once you are happy with the details, then go ahead and click on next. Now we are going to choose Spring Starter Project Dependencies okay so look at here this is spring boot version so always keep spring boot uh, version that is default by by default provided by spring boot team so this is the default and uh, you know stable version of spring boot version that you can keep as it is so by recording this video this is a spring boot version uh, that i use 2.5.0 but uh, you you may uh, you know get a different spring boot version while uh, while watching this video you can use other versions like snapshot and etc but these are not stable so always use a default and stable uh, release of spring boot version uh, provided by spring boot okay now here we're gonna choose the spring starter project dependencies so we're going to develop spring boot rest apis for that i'm going to choose here spring web starter dependency so if you can just mouse over on this selected dependency, you can see the dependency description. So Spring Web dependency we use to build web applications as well as RESTful web services. And Spring Web internally uses Spring MUC. Okay. And again, Spring Web starter dependency internally provides Apache Tomcat as a default embedded container. So we don't have to explicitly add Apache Tomcat dependency to our project because Spring Web Starter Dependency will internally provide Apache Tomcat as a default embedded container. All right, guys. And apart from this, uh, we are going to also use, uh, you know, uh, Spring Data JPA in order to interact with the database. So go ahead and just type Spring Data JPA. Okay. So Spring Data JPA is, uh, you know, very useful uh, because it reduces a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer. And Spring Data JPA internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. Okay, just remember Spring Data JPA is nothing but it's just an you know, abstraction on top of JPA and it internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. 
all right apart from that uh, we are going to use mysql so we are going to choose mysql gdbc driver all right and if you are using other relational databases like postgres or oracle then you need to choose appropriate jdbc driver okay in our case we are going to use mysql uh, server uh, that's why i have picked up mysql driver here all right great and apart from that we are going to use lombok okay so lombok is used to reduce uh, you know boilerplate code uh, such as getter setter methods constructors to string hash code methods etc so by uh, you know uh, lombok is very useful guys uh, it reduces a lot of boilerplate code so let's say if we have 10 domain entities or java classes in our project then we need to create a lot of getter setter methods and a constructor for each and every class right so in order to writing getter setter methods constructor to string hash code methods we can use lombok annotation to reduce a boilerplate code all right just choose lombok uh, dependency here so that's it so just make sure that you have selected spring uh, you know web dependency spring data gp dependency mysql driver and lombok dependency so here we have chosen lombok lombok library but make sure that you have installed lombok in your eclipse sts id okay so go ahead and click on finish and if you look at here spring boot project is you know created successfully in spring tools.id and basically Marvin will take some time to download all the dependencies from the internet and it will set up our Marvin project in Eclipse STS ID. So let's wait a couple of seconds so you can see here Marvin will basically download all the dependencies from the internet. Alright guys, our Spring Boot application is you know successfully set up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add Java 16 to our Spring Boot project. So right click on the project and then go to build path and choose configure build path okay and look at here by default you can see here GRE 15 is added but uh, we have chosen Java 16 while creating our Spring Boot project so let's go ahead and let's add Java 16 okay JDK 16 here so I have already configured JDK 16 in you know my spring tools to tidy so i'm going to choose java 16 here and uh, if you are using java 8 or 11 so these releases uh, you know these java versions uh, perfectly work so make sure that you use java 8 plus okay so here i am using jdk 16 but uh, you can use jdk jdk 8 or jdk 11 10 13 etc okay so go ahead and click on finish all right apply apply and close now if you see here jdk 16 is added to our spring boot application all right this is the first step we have created our spring boot project 